Razabanif IFO TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have on Zoom, Queensbury's very own Dev Sani. Dev, absolute pleasure having you on. Uh, first time actually doing this with you on Zoom, that is. I would have right, liked to prefer this face-to-face, -face, but hey, uh, we, we make means of what we have. Firstly, how are we doing? I'm good, mate. Look, we we chat every day. I'm uh, I'm surprised that we haven't done a Zoom. So uh, so yeah, no, it's it's good. All all good. This and I was just saying to you off camera, and I thought I'll bring this to on camera as well. The default track in my head now, when everything goes quiet, is that oh no, oh no, bit of bad day. That's the Saudi Arabian uh, promo that you guys have got for Joshua versus Usyk. It's so addictive. It's so good. Uh, have you got it on repeat? No, it just. In my head, if I'm not thinking about anything, if I'm not doing anything, that's it. I'll just find myself. Oh, no, oh, no. It's it's a good ad. It's a good ad. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Who, whoever put that together, good job. Absolutely. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Um, yeah, we uh, we just uh, we announced Amanda Serrano on the Joyce Parker show. So excited about that. I think we're uh, going to do something next week on a Zoom or something like that before Amanda comes over with maybe with Jake on there as well and Frank and get them together and start making a bit of noise about it. But um, yeah, we're good. It's it's good news. It's all happening. I've just been catching up on all the all the Joshua Usyk stuff, all the various interviews and stuff like that out there. I think Eddie and Johnny Nelson are having a good bit of fun back and forth as well. But it's, look, we love it. As boxing fans, we love it. All the constant stories and, and layers of intrigue. It's good. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get on to, obviously, this week, just want to, you mentioned the Amanda Serrano uh, on the undercard of Joyce Parker. You know, we've had some big events with Frank Warren this year. We've obviously had Fury White. We've got Joyce Parker, potentially. And again, potentially, uh, better be of yard. Uh, Dylan White Dubois, and you know, rumors are around that that fight could even take place. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of British level world champions that have walked away from the sport. Uh, Brooke Carr, more, more recently, we had Belly, we had David Hay a few years ago, Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg, Anti Crawler, um, going back even more, Carl Frotch, George Groves, James DeGale. Do you feel like you're finally picking up momentum? We, we're where almost Sky had a lot of these superstar names. We're now in an era now where outside of the heavyweights, we're looking for those potential new stars. And between yourselves, Matchroom, Sky, you know, you guys are trying to get momentum and, and trying to build and find those next superstars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, it, it is pretty much the new era is starting. This is this will be one of Joshua's last fights, win win or lose. Um Tyson Fury says he's retired at the moment. And that, that's that's another another guy, uh, Dylan White's thirty four. These these have been kind of the the flag bearers for British boxing. Kelbra Kami Khan have just retired, as you said. So there is a next batch coming through, and all all the uh, the various promoters have their guys. And I think Frank's done some great work with Anthony Yard and Daniel Dubois from actually before. Well, Anthony Yard was before the BT deal. We did a couple of fights on Box Nation, then got going, and now he's on the cusp. So he uh, he gets his shot, but Terbiev, whenever that fight gets announced, you know, I think it's pretty common knowledge that he's going to fight Arthur Terbiev. He knocks him out. I mean, he's a star. He's done it. You know, um, Daniel Dubois, if he could get himself a fight with Dillian White and knock out Dillian White, I mean, goodness me. So there's a lot of good things happening on the Queensbury side. You can see on Boxer, they've got they've got Ben Whitaker, and I, I'm a big Ben Whitaker fan, and Adam Azim, like, I love Adam Azim, so you you can you can see where they're going with it. And Matchroom have got Dalton Smith coming through as well, and he he's looking he's looking the part. They they got a few good fighters. It's good. It's the new era. It's coming through, and it's good to see these fighters. As much as like you can say about you know the various platforms, it's it, some people say it's bad for boxing that it's um, diluted it somewhat. That may well be the case. I still think the big fights can happen, and they people find a way for it to happen. A la Fury versus White, it happened. But what it does do is give these fighters coming through the chance to headline. Hamza Shiraz now at this end for Queensbury started headlining. He's unbeaten. He's looking the part. And it gives a fighter a different kind of buzz when they headline for the first time. And that's what you've got to do. And it's, I think they'll all get there. No, absolutely. Well, this week's a huge week for the heavyweight division, one of the most important fights of the division. And obviously with Queensbury as well, you're, I guess you'll be tuned in because you've got Joe Joyce, uh, Dubois, who are highly ranked with the governing bodies, who will be looking out for the winner. And I'm sure Frank's mentioned uh, m multiple times that 
you know, we're waiting for August 21st and we'll be pestering those governing bodies to call those mandatories. <laughs> but before we get there, it is a huge fight. And everyone I speak to is, is split. You know, Joshua's power, Joshua's movement, Joshua's change of team with Usyk now. Has he filled in more into a heavyweight? What's going through your head? How does this fight play out? Firstly, I want Joshua to win. Let, let me just make that clear. I think he's been brilliant for British boxing and he's uh, he's brought a lot of eyes to it and he's done some great things. I just don't think he will. I think Usyk's just, he's just the wrong guy for him. And I think people knew that going into the first fight, that he may well be the wrong guy for him, but maybe Josh was too big and too strong. It turned out he wasn't. And at the end of the fight, he was getting walked down himself. So now we're hearing that Usyk's put on a bit of weight. Um, and with that being the case, if he's done that on purpose, maybe he's sort of collected data from the first fight to uh, to think, well, if I was able to walk him down towards the end, weighing what I did before, maybe if I weigh a bit more, I can stick it on him a bit earlier. Um, at the same time, maybe he's thinking... Joshua's got to try and knock me out basically as quickly as possible. So I need to be ready for that and have a bit more about me because that's what he's going to do. Um, I think there's been a lot of talk about how Joshua can get better. He's got Robert Garcia, a new trainer. Uh, mentally, he seems to be saying all the right things. He's a, he's a deep thinker. Um, but Usyk can get better as well. And now he's got 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua in the bag, but he got the better of him in that fight. Um, and he knows what not to do because he was marked up in that fight as well. He did take a few himself. Um, so with that in mind, yeah, I just see Usyk getting the better of him, possibly stopping him, possibly stopping him. If he can, if he can put the punches together, we know he can hurt Joshua a bit. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. But look, Joshua wins it. I think it opens up the whole Fury Joshua dream fight door again maybe that door opens even if Joshua loses depends how he loses I guess but all eyes on Saturday we know Joshua had some success in the middle rounds I think he won two yes. out of three or three out of four yeah but he did, like... I've seen the replay a few times where he, he landed that clean right and Usyk was like a little bit taken aback by it and you look at Usyk's face at the end of the fight that's not the like he he swam and he got wet 100% if Joshua was to win, or his best chance of winning, is that getting Usyk out as early as possible? Yeah, look, he's um, he said a few things about how he didn't want to hurt Usyk in the first fight. I think everyone's collectively been taken aback by those comments. Um, it's not the sort of thing you want to hear. You just you'd just hope that Joshua is clean of mind heading into this backs himself, trusts himself, and imposes himself, and he will need to just get him out of there. He can't outbox him. You can't... You try to play chess with a chess player. It's it's that kind of thing. And Joshua isn't really a chess player. He's very good. He's an Olympic gold medalist himself, but Usyk's just a different level when it comes to boxing skill. It's a different level to, to most guys. So just don't try it. Play to your strengths, and, and that's what he's got to do. Eddie's mentioned on, in many interviews over the last day or so that we, we're loving the challenger mentality. We are the away team here. Uzik's gone through a lot over the last six months. It's it's written and it's it's quite well known about what's happening in Ukraine. He recently um, attempted to purchase the rights for his fight, for his country, pay for itself. And I believe the Saudis gave it to him for free and it will be on his YouTube channel, etc. But do you think there's a there's a bigger drive for, for Uzik to retain the titles, to put his country back on the map and, and give something to his country to smile about? Yeah, look, and, and that's very well put as well, mate. Um, look, I think they've both got their own motivations for sure, uh, and both fighters will be driven by different things. Anthony Joshua wants to become three-time heavyweight champion. He wants to prove all the doubters wrong. He wants to get back on top. Um, and Alexander Rusik just wants to, yeah, as you say, wants to do his country proud and, and do the same thing again. I can't imagine what he's been going through in, in his head. It's... It's unfathomable. It's it's unbelievable. Um, there may be lingering ghosts heading into into the fight. You don't know. He seems okay. He seems fairly relaxed from what I've seen in the fight week. But with all that going on, how can you be? Um, so, yeah, look, they've both got their own motivations heading into it. Sky Sports' John Nelson says that if Anti Joshua was to lose on Saturday, then he'll pack it in. He'll call it a day. Yeah, well, I... I 
I don't agree. I hear what he's saying, and and I I watched that interview because he talked about how Joshua wouldn't want to potentially play second fiddle. He's either the best or he isn't kind of thing. And if he's not, maybe he'll walk away. I I don't believe that. I think there will still there will always be big fights out for him. Win or lose, he's one of the biggest names in world boxing. Win or lose, he's one of the biggest draws in world boxing. There will always be big money offers on the table for him and big money fights. Deontay Wilder is a massive fight. Maybe a Dillian White fight one day. That's a big fight as well. They're, I mean, the, Joe Joyce is there. Daniel Dubois. Imagine Daniel Dubois. Let's say, say he knocks out Dillian White and he's got the title and then Anthony Joshua fancies a bit of Daniel Dubois. That There's so many good fights. So I can't see him walking away unless he decides the hunger's gone. And however rich he is, I know he's very rich. So, you know, can you? how hungry can you be when you've got millions and millions and millions of the, in the bank and, um, you know, you, maybe you just don't need the damage? I don't know. Eddie Hearn said that if Anthony Joshua was a still a Sky fighter, i.e. beyond Saturday night, Johnny Nelson wouldn't have made that comment. Is that Johnny Nelson being Johnny Nelson or is that, Johnny Nelson actually being thoughtful and thinking, as you said, Joshua doesn't want to play second fiddle. Yeah, I don't know. I think look, he's obviously he says a lot of a lot of things. Sometimes he makes a lot of sense. I like the thing that he's saying about um, he thinks that he'd be Usyk. Yeah, crack on. What like why wouldn't you say that if you're a boxer and you're a world heavyweight champion with like multiple defenses in the cruiserweight division that he had? I think he had a record-breaking amount of defenses, right? Why would you not think that you can beat the current? Uh, the guy who's just been a cruiserweight world, world champion. Of course, he should. He should think that. Um, and is he saying this because Joshua isn't on Sky? I don't know. I mean, he, he, I think he just he just goes with what's in his head at the time, and um, whatever it is, it creates headlines. And by the way, he's a great promotional asset for Sky. There was a lot of talk about how um, they would fill the Eddie Hearn void when Eddie Hearn left. I think they are doing that with a combination of Johnny Nelson. Um, and Adam Smith, you look at the views Adam Smith interviews go, you know better than anyone. He he gets the views, right? And and Ben Shalom does his bit as well when it's when it's a boxer show. I think they are working very well to fill that void and, and Johnny Nelson's sort of come up a little bit to help do that. So um I'm all for it. Say do do your thing. Do your thing, Johnny. You mentioned earlier about Tyson Fury being retired and if he comes back, whether Joshua Wynn loses. I think a lot of people want to know now is is that WBC belt. We saw the Ring magazine act very quickly. Few said I'm retired and they've taken that belt and it's on the line on Saturday night. August 26th is the deadline that WBC have given Tyson Fury that if put it in writing and, and then they will just literally take the belt off him. So if August 27th that belt is no longer with Fury, does that are we then convinced? Yep, yeah, he's definitely not coming back. For now. I don't know. <laughs> I just I don't know. I am um, I know too uh, I know too well to not try to second guess Tyson Fury. Nobody can predict what he's going to do. I can't predict it. Frank can't predict it. I'm not sure Tyson knows day to day what he's going to do because you've seen, like in recent hours, he's he's having a go at Del Boy again. He's talking about how he's turned down the money, but he's retired. So I look, I don't know. I don't know. Um, all I can say is, I hope that he isn't retired because he is the best heavyweight in the world, and him against the winner of Joshua Usyk is a tremendous fight, and him against Joshua any time is a tremendous fight. And uh, him against Joshua, the country stops still to watch that fight. Uh, and I want to be part of that. So for sure, I hope he's not done. Let's hope so. Um, Dev, you caused uh, a few headlines today. I saw an interview with uh, on Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn did an interview, I believe it was on Boxing King Media. Shout out to Boxing King Media. Um, Shout about out. A, a comment you made regarding pay-per-view buys and how Joyce Parker will do similar numbers to Eubank Jr. Uh, and, and Connor Ben. Uh, Eddie obviously retaliated today and he, and he obviously spoke about yourself and said, well, he's confident they'll, they'll break records and do uh, a million. I just want to hand the mic back to you. <laughs> yeah, look, I uh, what I said was, I don't think the numbers will be too dissimilar between Joyce Parker and Ben Eubank. And that's not because Joyce Parker's a much bigger fight I think Ben Eubanks, the fight that appears to the ca appeals to the casuals more. You can just see that the dads, the history, the the great presser that they had, everything. It's 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 that. However, 
with the platform in mind as well, it's not an easy purchase journey for a design pay-per-view. It's a very easy purchase journey for a BT Sport pay-per-view. Literally just do it on your remote control. If you're a new customer to DAZN, you can't just do that. You have to second screen it at some point. And by that, I mean, go on your phone and, and sign up, do all your card details. There's exit points in that. You give up, you fudge the card number, you do the wrong thing, you put the wrong email address, the email address you've already registered. Before. There's so many things. I know this because of the four years that I did at Box Nation. And Box Nation had the same sort of issue where when you're trying to drive subscribers on fight night, you can serve them as many ads as you like, create as much noise as you like, which the zone are going to do. It's going to be a huge hype event, and rightly so. However, the path to purchase isn't particularly simple. Um, and it's casual sports fans and impulse buyers that you're looking to get on the Saturday night. And you're looking to do that sort of five, six, seven o'clock, you know, you press the button, you've done it. You've just watched the football. You've seen an advert. Great, I'll, I'll do it. If that becomes tricky, you're either going to do it and you, you manage to make it all the way through. You give up and you just wait for a little clip to come out or you find other means to watch the fight. And <laughs> Eddie Hearn has said himself that he thinks pay-per-view isn't what it was. He was sort of not predicting particularly high numbers for the Joshua Usyk rematch. He said the pay-per-view market has changed. So with all those things considered, and everything you said, I've seen the stick that I've got today, right? I've seen all the crying with laughter emojis. I've seen myself referred to as a sock puppet. Um, with all of that in mind, Reza, I do take it back. I regret what I've said there and sort of thinking about it. I, I actually think we'll we'll probably do double on the on the Joyce Parker. So, I mean, look, mate, we've just added Amanda Serrano. She's done she's done one and a half million views globally on design. What, what more do you want? Yeah. One and a half million. That because do you know why? Because Eddie promoted her so well at Madison Square Garden. She'd become a global superstar if she wasn't already. So you add her to the mix. How many pay-per-views buys does that add? Hey, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. And it, it, look, it'll be a good show. It's a cracking fight between two of the best heavyweights in the world, and they await the winner of Joshua Usyk. If Fury's retired, right, like he says he is, then they await the winner of Joshua Usyk. I believe Joe Joyce is going to win. And I believe the winner of Joshua Usyk has to go and see Joe Joyce. And I think when they see him, they're not going to like what they see. That's that's my view on it. Eddie says Joyce Parker doesn't do more than 100,000. Well, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie says a lot of things. I'm sure Joyce Parker will do just fine. I guess with, uh, with Connor Ben and Eubank, we, we'll probably never know the figures. We'll probably never know the figures for either of these fights. We never actually get told, do we? We get, we get like, like the the Serrano, Katie Taylor. It's a sort of massaged figure that goes out as a great, you know, a great news piece on one and a half views, a million views worldwide. You know, you probably won't ever really find out, but I think Joyce Parker will do just fine. And it's got a, a very easy path to purchase. And hey, now Amanda Serrano involved. Bit of Jake Paul. I'm sure he'll get involved. There's going to be some noise. There's going to be some buzz. And it's a great fight. No, absolutely. And I, I did see Jake Paul post uh, on his Instagram the post of the fight with Joyce Parker and Serrano. So always good to have uh, most valuable promotions on site as well. Yeah, look, not just that. So most valuable promotions, they're, they're, they're a great outfit, by the way. Nikisa's a, a top guy that we, we've been working with since Daniel Dubois and Tommy Fury went over to fight in Cleveland. So not just that. Let's look at the ingredients, right? Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker, two of the best heavyweights in the world. Amanda Serrano, female boxing legend. Legend of boxing full stop, a superstar. She's in the Guinness Book of World Records, by the way. How many fighters do you know in the Guinness Book of World Records? I, I don't know many. Yeah? Amanda Serrano is. Yeah, so she's in there. Tyson Fury is going to be all over this because he loves Joseph Parker. They're like brothers. He's going to be involved. Yes, what have we done there? And then there's Jake Paul. Mate, this is, this is big. It's going to be a big week up in Manchester. And absolutely, we look forward to it. Only a couple of weeks, five weeks away, not far away now from, yeah. from Joyce Parker. But yeah, Dev, uh, yeah, thank you for a little bit of your time. I know it's quite late today. Um, uh, yeah, let's enjoy fight week, the rest of the build up and, and roll on Saturday night and see who becomes uh, or who retains the belt. Yes, 100%. And look, I just want to add finally, me saying that thing about the pay-per-view. Conor Ben Eubanks a brilliant fight. And Eddie Hearns said himself that on Sky, it would break pay-per-view records. That may be the case. I just don't think it can do it on DAZN. And the reason is it's a bit harder to buy it. Some people will give up. 
that's just facts, unfortunately. But that's that is what it is. Is what it is. But um, yeah, nice talking to you, mate. And all eyes on Saturday. Dempsani, IFL TV. Thank you very much. Anyway. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story. So stay tuned. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Day. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.